uh, it's a very big contingent on my behalf um, that we actually could get into such a state and uh, I don't need the membership to be um, railroaded and not get information. I think that information is very important. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Martin, do you have a grade on the performance of the I would give that, I would give it a, I'll give it a grade B. Okay. Uh, Jeremy? Everybody knows that this district council has been decimated. Um, over the past couple of years, we've been rebuilding. And I think the delegate body and everybody in the district council has been working really hard to try and make things right. There's been a lot of bumps in the road. I think everybody's learning from those bumps in the road. I think it's going to continue to get better. I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. Uh, again, it's not about beating people up for the mistakes that have been made. It's building on them and moving forward. And I definitely think we're in that direction. And I would, I would agree. I would definitely give them a B, B plus. Thank you. Dan. The, uh, the, the grade I would give to the executive body and the delegates collectively would be a C. I think a lot of the delegates for until recently have deferred to the judgment of the council. I don't think the judgment of the council has been all that good until recently. Uh, they're, they're starting to do the, the right things in my opinion, but it was a very, very rough start and we're still paying for it. Thank you. Does anybody have a very short response to anything that any of the candidates just said in response to that question? Okay, we're going we're gonna to stick to that format, so if anybody does have a short response uh, to one of the answers, they should feel free to uh, say it. Our second question, and we'll start with uh, Jeremy. What will you do if elected as president to try and strengthen the governance of the district council? I think it has to start from the local level. I think we need to show the locals that we're listening to them and we understand what's going on. Um, from there, I think we need to support our representatives of the council, show them that we're supporting them and behind them. The only way we're gonna get together and rebuild is through unity. And I think I, I've been preaching it, I believe it, and I think it's still possible. I think we can do it. I think that's, the future of this union. We need to start at the local level, show support, and bring that up. Thank you. Dan. Strengthening the, govern strengthening the governance of the council. The first thing is I think we all need to know what the rules are. I think a lot of the delegates don't know what the rules are. And I think some of them don't want them applied sometimes. Uh, it needs to be, uh, we need to verify whether we all know the, the same rules and how they're applied. We need to, uh, the president himself needs to understand the rules the best. He needs to know when to entertain a motion and when to deny it. And I think there's been several motions that should not have been entertained and others that should have. For, the first thing is that we need to know the rules. Mark. Thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, I believe it starts with you, the rank and file, the hard hats, the men on the job, out there, the carpenters. This is where it all is going to start, and you are the backbone of this organization. It starts also with the apprentices. We've got to get the apprentices more involved. We've got to let them know what it is to be in the union. They're actually coming here and getting trained and getting paid for it, not showing up. So I believe that you know, there have to be stricter rules for their businesses, and even for some of the mechanics as well for not showing up on jobs. But the bottom line is you have to make that decision to be in this union, and you have to make a decision for this district council. Now, as you know, the locals don't play a very big role anymore. They're actually a dues collector. So I want the uh, membership to get more involved with the delegates and get their voice heard so we can uh, speak for you here at our district council delegate meetings. Thank you. you know, in 
in order to improve governments, I think we need we need stability. I think this has been an unstable organization for a lot of reasons, um, and you know, at the local level, I think they do need support from the council. I think there should be uh, more of a partnership with the locals. Uh, on the uh, you know, one, one of the things that the council has just taken on was uh, the steward certification. I think that there is a lot of uh, work there to be done. I do think the fact that. Um, moving towards a test where the steward should be backed up and, and I think it starts from there integrating with the council and the locals but also you know when it comes to strength in government you know we have meetings twice you know twice a month uh, the governance of the council has been pretty constricted and what it can do I think uh, it has to be able to be shown that it can get things done I think it's been hamstrung a lot at a lot of different levels um, there's a lot of there's a lot of ideas out there we need to take some chances, you know. I said, build up NYC is a good example of, of something that we're trying to do on the outside. I think we need to be allowed to do that uh, in the future. I think we need to be allowed to, you know, the only people who, who succeed are those who failed before. Um, I think we need to, you know, be able to spend money on very relevant issues and get involved in things that right now that we haven't been able to get involved in. I think we need to move forward. I think we can't be stuck in. Uh, a 2009 uh, situation with the council. I think we need to move forward. I think we need to be allowed to try and fail, uh, and that's the only way you succeed. So that's my answer. Any response from anyone? Okay. Next question: What is your view on the ongoing contract negotiations with employer associations and? Um, is there an argument in favor of conceding uh, any of the demands of the associations in any area? And uh, we're going to start with Dan Franco. Are we talking particularly about the uh, wall and ceiling, or are we just talking about all of them? The I can reread the question uh, if you like, um, or you, you can comment on, on any uh, contract. I'll, I'll stick to the wall and ceiling contract for now because that's the one that's still in uh, still being worked out uh, this contract should have never gotten to the stage it should have been uh, more delineated we're still working out the details this this contract should have been done already but full mobility in my opinion should never even been on the table we should not have even entertained full mobility we, in 157, we even made a motion that if full mobility was going to be instituted, we would strike against it. I don't know how possible that is, but I agree with the sentiment that full mobility should not have been entertained. Thank you. Pardon. Thank you. Uh, this is a long, drawn-out contract, and uh, as an elected delegate, I think it's a good contract. The brothers should be very happy with it. I voted in favor of this contract, and I voted for full mobility. As I'm a general foreman, and I'm sick and tired of wannabe carpenters coming to work and giving them a two-hour show-up time. Tired of it. I voted for that contract because I want stability. I want this council to be around. I want the retirees to get their pension. I want our medical coverage restored. This is a good contract. And it has to take a little time, I understand, to work it out. Now, some uh, meetings ago, Mr. Wall said that we're trying out these new machines, actually 10, I think, in, in all, and then it, it'll be presented to the government for the final review and to be approved. It takes time to do everything. We can't rush into it. I believe that this uh, contract will be uh, enforced in the early New Year. That's my anticipation. It's my opinion. It's not the council's. I didn't hear from anybody. But judging by what it said, that's what it is. Uh, this council made a historic decision. And uh, the carpenters making, uh, doing 40 hours a week, is now going to make $200,000. $200,000 a year, working 40 hours. You know that there's ground being broken around here, guys. Things are picking up. Your brothers and sisters, look forward to a good living and be proud of your union. Thank you. Of the, um, 
the negotiations surrounding these, con and it's not the contract, there's a number of contracts out there and each of them presented uh, hurdles out there. And I think this was the perfect storm. You know, we have a world economic crisis coupled with the contractors trying to get out of the New York plan. For those of you guys who aren't familiar, the New York plan was administered by the Building Trades Employees Association, which kept all of our general contractors union all the way across. Um, they abrogated from that. We as the building trades held on to that. So that throw that in there. Throw that in, that, in the fact that we're under supervision. Throw in the fact that we did have uh, a decertification vote on the heavy highway with the dock builders and the GCA. Throw in the fact that we had a controversial element of, of the contract that was proposed by the contractors on court and full mobility that not only changed the consent degree, you know, it's tough enough to get two parties to agree to things, but to have it go through the RO the, the, and the judge and the U.S. Attorney's Office has complicated this contract to the extent. I don't think anybody involved, like I wasn't on the negotiating team for the contract on there, but I was a delegate and I did vote um, yes on the wall ceiling contract. Uh, I voted yes because we need to have New York City work for New York City carpenters. We do over two million hours a year uh, from out-of-towners. I think that affected the welfare fund. Uh, it definitely affected the welfare fund. When you have to reciprocate back your welfare to the councils that are in our, um, that are outside here for those hours, two million hours, that took $23 million out of our welfare fund last year. Um, you know, a good contract is ones where everybody feels they got a little bit screwed. I think the 16.4% raise uh, kind of complements that. Uh, but then we still have the BCA contract. The BCA contract, the BCA is, is mid to larger GCs and uh, subcontractors in there. And anybody who's been to the delegate meetings that he's gone into it, where we have a lot of non-signatory GCs out there. And that's complicated that negotiation. This was the perfect storm of negotiations. You know, it took 20, 30 years worth of, worth of, worth of good negotiations compounded by the complex nature of, of you know, being in supervision and transferring to a new um, administration, uh, a decertification vote on the heavy highway. You know, this was a tough, tough, tough run. And we're still not there yet. But, um, you know, any good negotiations compromise. Some guys, um, you know, listen, if a thousand guys end up, you know, if we cut the out of town hours in a half, that's a thousand guys doing a thousand hours. That's a thousand New York City members making their medical, taking care of their families. So, you know, you get voted as a delegate to, to make hard decisions, and those are the hard decisions. And, you know, you, you, you can't be in a leadership position and tell people what they want. You tell them what they need to hear, and you tell them honestly. So that's why I'm being honest on this one. I just want to give everybody a background. So concessions had to be made. Progress was gained, and the effort to put more people to work. That's the key here. So you, you know, to be a representative here, uh, I'd like to represent as a delegate as I am, and hopefully as president, we're gonna have to make tough decisions and tell you tough things. The whole world doesn't stop outside 395 Hudson Street. It's a very active, mobile, 30, 20 to 30 billion dollar construction market out there. And there's a lot of different sectors on this thing. And there isn't a square peg that fits in all the holes. So that's the honest truth of it. So, you know, the concessions or give or, or um, changes in the contracts had to be, of course they did, of course they did. Um, and hopefully we were able to get the compliance program to a point where we implement it, get the raises, get our welfare and health and welfare back. So I talked to my mother, she's you know, married to my father, she's a 53 year retired member. I think it's easy to have to explain to your mother that, that she has to pay into her health care. Uh, well, you guys are living through the same thing. It's not easy. Um, and these are the hard decisions that people get elected to be made. And, and I think that as an elected official, you gotta be honest with people and tell them what they, what they, what they need to hear, not just what they want to hear. Thanks. Right now we have one contract, one, the hoist agreement. Everybody's talking about the wall and ceiling agreement. There's nothing there yet. We have a pilot program that's going on right now. Hopefully it goes through, hopefully the judge says yay and, and the contract goes through. Um, the BCA, from what I understand, doesn't even want to talk to us. GCA, same nonsense, nothing really moving forward. This is what they're dealing with and trying to negotiate. Um, the wall and ceiling contract, five years from now, I think Martin said, we're gonna be at $100 an hour. I have some concerns about that. I have concerns because where do we go from there? And I don't know if anybody's thinking about where do we go from there. I'm also concerned about, there's a lot of good carpenters that work off that out of work list. 